the future has arrived. It's the 1946 Paris Air Show, and the world is about to change forever. Unveiled to an enthusiastic public is a new type of aircraft that they have never seen before. It has no propellers, no piston engine, and is faster than anything ever built. It is the world's first commercial jetliner. But this aircraft concept, with its iconic slung under twin engines, published as the very real future around the globe, would never be built. Why did the Dutch, seemingly ahead of the aviation curve, years before the comet, abandon the jetliner before it even took to the sky? This is a tale of ambition, betrayal, and British corporate espionage. Meet our future in the past, the Fokker F-26 Phantom. Before the war, Fokker had been a giant in the world of aviation. The collapse of Holland to the Nazis and the death of the founder in 1936 had led the company almost to the brink of ruin. But now with peace blanketing the globe, Fokker was reborn ambitious, confident and hungry. Hungry to reclaim the mantle as one of the greatest aircraft builders in the world, and to reach this goal, they decided to create a plane that was so unbelievably bonkers that it would put them back on the map. Enter the Dutch airline KLM and Dutch National Institute of Aircraft Development, NVI, whose Dutch name I'll put on the screen right now and let you try to pronounce at home. With this team, they realized that piston engines were on the way out and jet aircraft were the new hotness. But so far, jet aircraft were severely limited to a multitude of German designs like the Mi-262 and emerging American aircraft that had only seen limited action. Subscribe if you want to see them as I will be covering them soon. So the only logical conclusion, a commercial jet aircraft or dubbed a jetliner. And this is where the design of the F-26 Phantom really makes the difference. This tale of the first jetliner is rather controversial, and as you will see in a moment, there is a possibility that the tale is not as clear as you think. This is because the media at the time only really reported one side of events, something that still happens today. Take for example the recent spy balloons that have been crossing the American continent, that I'm researching for a future video. The more conservative media has been pushing this story as part of their stance on China, whilst the more left-leaning media has eased off, deciding not to publish many of the stories about the aftermath between these two countries' relations. It gets even more interesting if we look at the Russian media that covered a whole different side of events, claiming that they were shocked that the US would shoot down a simple Chinese science experiment. Oh, and if you're wondering how I know this, this is Ground News, the only platform that I know that allows you to see everything that's going on, not just what certain media wants you to see, and it's an essential part of my research. For example, I love the blind spot page that shows articles underreported or overreported. Surprisingly, some publications that I trust somehow miss important news. In addition, I also love how I can search and track specific topics like the spy story to see every new development. Essentially, to keep this video up to date a month after the events transpired. Go to ground.news found to stay informed on breaking news that is happening around the world, compare different coverage, and know where your news is coming from. Plus, it's free to check it out, and you'll also be supporting the channel and funding all the animations that you love to watch. So thank you for Ground News for sponsoring the video today. The Phantom would have an all-metal design with a low-wing layout. The cabin would be pressurized and carry around 17 passengers in their cargo, with the seats laid out with two seats on the right-hand side and a single row on the left. The after the plane would also have a toilet and two small cargo bays. As for the front of the aircraft, it would have a captain, a first officer, and a radio operator who would face to the aft during flight. Remember three crew cockpits? Ah, oh, what a time. 
There was also room between the cockpit and the passenger cabin for a purser and a stewardess to prepare meals, organize itineraries, and I'm sure prepare many of the Dutch gin and tonics required for their high class clientele. Now for the moment that you have all been waiting for, let's talk about those engines. Specifically, the Phantom would have two Rolls-Royce Nene RB41 Series 1 jet engines built into twin nacelles fixed under the aircraft to assist accessibility. Again, an innovation. These engines were the most powerful available at the time and would have given this small aircraft quite the kick on takeoff, especially considering the jet only had an empty weight of six tons. With these bad boys, the plane would have had a cruising speed of 800 kilometers per hour, or 497 miles per hour for those Boeing engineers watching, and a solid range of 1,000 kilometers, or 540 nautical miles. Perfect for pan-European routes, or use throughout the Dutch colonies. Now, a slight criticism that I can give as an armchair aircraft engineer is that having the engines under the plane and behind the front landing gear is what would be inviting all sorts of trouble in ingesting material. Imagine taking off in a tire burst and now you have yourself a miracle on the Hudson, but without Captain Sully. So this aircraft was the future and airlines like KLM wanted them and the world was ready. What happened? This is where we have to sort real history from rumor. After the Paris Air Show of 1946, the global press announced that the jet age had finally arrived as a praiseworthy effort to develop a jet airliner, and that airlines would be lining up to stock their fleets with the F-26. But that didn't happen. Fokker didn't manage to secure any orders for its design at the air show, not even from its sponsor, KOM. On the 6th of October 1948, KLM had a meeting with Fokker to discuss the jetliner concept. In attendance was KLM boss Peelsman and technical director Henk Venderdahl, and I apologize for butchering their names. They would grill Fokker on the F-26 and other lost twin jet engine designs. While not saying to Fokker at the time, the CEO believed that development of a jet airliner would be too much for Fokker to manage alone, suggesting that they team up with British manufacturer de Havilland, choosing to withdraw support until then, effectively killing the project. While there are notes that they did have several meetings, de Havilland decided to proceed alone with their own jet airliner, the Comet which would go on to win glory of being the first jet liner. And this is where we get to tinfoil hat time. It's been said that the design of the Comet radically changed between 1945 and 1946 after this joint discussion. And some have gone as far as to say that the British took all of the data and used it for their own de Havilland 106 Comet. Fokker would take a step back and produce a turboprop aircraft, the F-27 Friendship, around 10 years later. Now, Fokker would stand by their word that the F-26 was always to be a concept aircraft first and foremost, and never actually intended to sell to airlines, that it was to be a technical and economical feasibility study only. But sources on the ground in Paris in 1946 swear that Fokker was standing up loud and clear, declaring that the world would have the F-26 flying in three years. A reality that would never come to pass. So what would have the world been like had it been built? Taking to the skies a year or so before the comet, it would have radically shifted the world's focus of the aviation industry. No longer would it been ruled by English manufacturing, but rather Dutch aircraft flying over the continental skies. Fokker itself might have garnered attention from American firms like Boeing and Lockheed, and we might have seen the company bought out, or rather, plant North American routes to come to dominate the jet age. And we would have seen the rise of many other small airline firms coming to complete. Perhaps a dream that only I have. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know.